Hello, yeah, I'd like to thank Grant for inviting us here and we start. أذكر يوم الشتي لما كنت حملة وفي بطنك البيبي بعد الشهور انت حملة كله كان مبسوط وجاء اليوم بعد سبع شهور كان يوم الولادة ما كان في وقت تمشي لي المستشفى وبعدين أخذت سيارة ابن عمك وسيتي وانت في السيارة والدم في آخر السيارة وتمشي وتمشي يلا يا دم شيك بوينت لكن ما في تأشيرة في تقطعي شيك بوينت وإحنا سيرين كثير كثير أوي أوي وتكلم على الكوماندو لكن ما في إجازة تقطعي شيك بوينت وجاء الكوماندو بعد ساعات وانت بتكلمي وتوضح الإشكالية بتاع البطن والطفل وبعدين 
أربعين دقيقة بعد أربعين دقيقة خرج الطفل من بطنك كان ميت وانت عرفتي وتوقعتي من زمان أنك الوحيدة باستطاعتك أن تتكلفي بالابن ولكن توقعت بأن أنت مرأة محتلة جسديا وأرضيا وأنت فاهمة بأن وضعيتك عايشة في أرض الاحتلال Imagine you are this woman. It happened on a winter day, 14 December. You felt it is coming, the baby. After all these months of carrying it, going through some rough days, standing in a checkpoint several times for hours, crossing this life in you and the one outside. It came, this wonderful moment, and an incredible power in you rang out and called I will manage. It's all gonna be okay. It was too early, seven months, but medically there were, seems to be no implications. There was no ambulance close to Shechem that day, and so early morning, as you borrowed the car of your brother-in-law. The car speeded up, and you were lying in the back seat bleeding. You arrived at the checkpoint quite quick. You heard your husband explaining that it is urgent. There is a pregnant woman in the car. She is going to deliver each second. We need to head quickly to the hospital. There were some discussions, and then your husband tried to explain that there was no way he could get a permit to pass in this hour of the day, in this urgency. And so, time passed by. The commander arrived, and discussion kept going. In the report, it has been said it took around 14 minutes while you were bleeding all this time. And then your baby came out. He was dead. You have not received the medical care you had to receive. You always knew you could protect this child very little, but you could give him life. This was your one absolute conviction. But now, sucked down in your pain and no words to pronounce the space you entered into, you understand that the politics of the occupation entered your own body. No. This body has no control of the life it gives. You are a woman in an occupied area. Mikhail Kubi, Rais al-Sabiq, or Jalal al-Sabiq for the Amn al-Sahiyuni. هو من أهم الناس في الاستجوابات والتجليد فيما يخص المسجونين العرب في الأراضي المحتلة كوبي كان يحب اللغة كثير وخاصة اللغة العبرية والعربية تناولها في الثانوية الناس بيتغيروا لما يذهبوا إلى السجن كيكونوا أبطال في الأول ولكن في حالة السجن كيتغيروا لأن الوضع كيتغير كثير من الناس كيخافوا المجهول خافوا التعذيب والحجرة والظلم والإهانة تخيل تجلس بعد دقائق محروم من كل حاجة غادي تخاف لأن ما عارف شنو غادي يوقع لأن العذاب الإهانة السجن الاعتقال هما الأس... هما الاشياء المهمه للجلات باش يتغلب عليك لان الانسان او الشخص اشياء كالعائله المجتمع الاصدقاء النسب كله مهم لكن فضعيه اعتقال او السجن حتى اكبر الارهابيين لما يتعرضوا الى الاعتقال كي يخافوا وكي يشكموا على كل حاجه كاين مثل العربي القديم كيقولوا خلي 100 مره تبكي لكن ماشي مي تبكي مي احسن مني هنايا كوبي كيعتقد بان اهم حاجه باش يجلد او يعذب المسجون هي 
يعرف اللغة ديالو لغة الجسد لأن اللغة هي أهم حاجة اللي كتربط الناس كتجمع المجتمع حتى الفرق السرية فيما يخص حزب أو فرقة حماس حزب مقاومة إسلامية أو القاعدة عندهم لغة خاصة كتجمعهم موسى الخوري Michael Kobe, the former chief integrator for Israeli general security service. The Shabakh probably has more experience than anyone else in the world in the interrogation of hostile Arab prisoners. He has been at work on it for more than 60 years. He is comfortably retired from his Shabakh job now. There are still many things he is not free to discuss, but he is happy to talk about his methods. Kobe came to his career as an integrator through his love of language. He grew up speaking Hebrew, Yiddish, and Arabic, and studied Arabic in high school. He is proud of his skills, the ability to speak Arabic so fluently that he cannot adapt multitude slang flavor. He also had the skill for reading the body language and facial expression of his subject, and for sensing a lie. He is a skilled actor who could alternately befriend or intimidate a subject. Blending these skills with the tricks he had learned over the years for manipulating people, Kobe didn't just question his subject, he orchestrated the emotional surrender. People change when they, are got, when they get in prisoner, Kobe says. They may, be, they may be heroes outside, but inside they change. The conditions are different. People are afraid of the unknown. They are afraid of being tortured, of being held for a long time. Try to see what it is like to sit with a hood over your head for four hours, when you are hungry and tired and afraid, when you are isolated from everything and have no clue what is going on. When the captive believes that anything could happen, torture, execution, indefinite imprisonment, even after the persecution of his loved ones, the interrogator can go to work. A very large part of who a man is is dependent on his circumstances. No matter who he is, before his arrest, his sense of self will blur in custody. Isolation, fear, and deprivation force a man to retreat, to reorientate himself, and to reorder his priorities. For most men, Kobe says, the hierarchy of reality under stress is number one, self, number two, group, number three, family, number four, friends. In, order, in other words, even the most delicate terrorist, when pushed hard enough, will act to preserve and protect himself at the expense of anyone or anything else. There is, there is an old Arab saying, Kobe says, let 100 mothers cry, but not my mother, but better my mother than me. Kobe believes that the most important skill for an interrogator is to know the prisoner language. Working through interpretators is at best a necessary evil. Language is at the root of all social connection and plays a critical role in secret societies like Hamas, and Al-Qaeda, a shared vocabulary or verbally shorthands helps to cement the group. Musa Al-Khouri, after I was in the first time, 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 Palestine, a man of the work, 30 years old, and three children. لحية سوداء والشعب أسود أعتقل ستة المرات من طرف الجيش الصهيوني ربطوه سبعين يوم في الحبس كتفوي بديه 
Kto skara del batata la raso? Kto zle? Bilsofok kosi. Rizlin kudem yin. Qsar ala rizlin. Lula ram yin del kosi. Kumeglis il kosi kaimil kudem. Yada kaida rodharo. Yada kresi del kosi. Kiwa tukba. Tukba tuk roa bain. Kosi kain shi. و كان جي حسب القرار وكان حسب لأن بيك البول مشي وجي وكان طلب الله باش العذاب كان قص الحاجة الوحيدة اللي كتفكر فيها هي يا ربي من هذا التعذيب نقول لي بغاو نقول لي بغاو لكن هذا الشيء مازال ما سالا غادي يجي أليس في بلاد الأعجوبة هذه التقنية الخاصة في التعذيب مستعملة كثير في الأراضي المحتلة من طرف الجيش أو الأمن الصهيوني هي تقنية باش يرونوا بلادهم في عقله ويخلطوه مزيان باش ما يعقل حتى شي حاجة وهذه التقنية صعيبة عندها علاقة بالفكر والعقل يعني يطرحوا سؤال سؤال آخر في نفس الوقت باش الشخص اللي معذب كيتخربق هذه التقنية معروفة بها إسرائيل أو الأرض الصهيونية فيما يخص لهذا المعذب كيتمنى كل دقيقة باش هاد التعذيبات التقنية اللي هي خطيرة جدا ما توصلش باش يكمل هاد العذاب ويقول اللي بغا موسى كوري بالستينيان بيزنس مان Businessman, a slim 34 years old man with a black goatee and black hair. He has been arrested in interrogation six times by Israeli forces. He was once held for 71 hours. My hands were cuffed behind my back and a potato sack was over my head. My legs were cuffed to a tiny chair. The chair base is 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters. The back is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. It is hardwood. The front leg are shorter than the back ones, so you are forced to slide forward in it. Only your hands are bound into the back. If you sit back, the back of the chair digs into the small of your back. If you stand forward, you are forced to hang by your hand. It is painful. They will take you to the toilet only after screaming or request 100 times. You can think about only one thing, how to make the treatment stop. Your thoughts go back and forth, and back and forth, and you can no longer have a normal stream of consciousness. Then there is Alice in Wonderland. The aim of Alice in Wonderland, or confusion technique, is to confound the expectation and conditioned reaction of the interrogate. The confusion technique is designed not only to obliterate the familiar, but to replace it with the weird. Sometimes, two or more questions are asked simultaneously. Pitch tone and volume of the interrogator's voices are unrelated to the import of the questions. No pattern of questions and answer is permitted to develop, nor do the questions themselves relate logically to each other. If this technique is pursued patiently, the manual says the subject will start to talk just to stop the flow of bubble which assaults him. أنا 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 مهاجر جيت هاد البلاد ولكن ما كنحسش راسي في هاد البلاد كنتمي كثير من الناس الغرباء بحالي كنظن بلي أنا خارج هاد المجتمع المجتمع ما كيتقبلش الثقافات الغريبة بعض المرات كنحس راسي ضعيف ولا في تناقض كنحاول ندامج هذا المجتمع نتقبل التغرب ديالي وندامج ناس اخرين كيعجبني يوب كوهين لان كيمثل شخصية مختلفة لان كيظن بلي انا هو انت هو الاخر انت اللي كتبني المجتمع لأن الكلمة الغولندية صام لايفين كلمة زوينة لكن مع الأسف يوكوهين خرج من الحياة السياسية 
وكاينين اللي ما ما نقدرش يوصلوا داك الشيء اللي باغي يوصلوا حتى اني غرام ناس ناس انتحر حتى هو كان صديق مزيان ديال يوك كوهين اني غرام ناس كاتب مفكر انتليكتويل كان حتى هو من دوك الناس اللي كانوا بغاو يعطوا يعطيو واحد واحد شيء لهذا المجتمع باش يكون الاندماج الثقافات يكونوا الصلاحات ما بين التفريقة والأفكار السياسية والاجتماعية والدينية وإلى آخرها لأن رمضان كان يظن لأن كان في النهضة رينسونس في أوروبا هو كيعتبر راسو عصفور محظوظ تعامل مع اللغة الهولندية من قبل ما يجي لهولندا لأن عارف بأن هولندا عطات له ولكن هو حاول كيعطي اشياء خاصه وتاسف وتعلم كثير لان المجتمع الهولندي ما ما وصلش بعض المرات ملي كان عندي برامج تلفزيونيه كيطرح السؤال واش الاندماج الثقافي في المجتمع الهولندي وصل كيضحك كيقول لهم ما تقدروش تقولوا لي انا هولندا وصلات او لبات الرغبه ديال الاندماج الثقافي لان ما كانش شي دوله في استطاعتي غير تقول وصلات ولا لباس كيضحك كم حتى انا لان نظن ان المجتمع الهولندي هو جزء ديالي انا وانا جزء من المجتمع الهولندي كما كانوا الناس القدام فلسفه الاخر هو انت ولهذا خصنا نكونوا في هولندا وخط وخط اساس واحد الحزب اللي يسمى البي في في زعما ديك الناس غاديين في الطريقه ديال ايديوت ستيبيد باش يتكونوا هاد القضيه ديال الاختلافات او فيما يخص التيار السياسي او الثقافي او الاعتزال او المنع هادشي ما وصلش لهذا جاوب اني رمضاس في القضيه بان مع الاسف هادشي ما وقعش <clears throat> I am, I am an immigrant. I came here long ago, but yet it seems as if it will never be my home. I feel closer to foreigners, no matter where they come from. I feel easily excluded, and I carry an amount of minority complex. I can fall quite easily into conflict and feel easily hurt. After years of trying to adjust, I learned to accept my difference, and I believe, as part of this process, I start to cherish any differences. I like your point, for you represent something rare, a true believer in the other, a genuine belief in a sophisticated society woven from diversities. The word Zamenlevin in Dutch is a beautiful word. Your point quit the politic life, admitting to himself the little effect he had made on the politics today. Not much longer after your point's withdrawal, Anil Ramdas died on 17 February this year. Ramdas was an advocate of your poem. Anil Ramdas, a writer, a thinker, an intellectual, was another example of mine. In the newspaper, it was written that Ramdas' death was voluntary. Some say that in the last years, he was deceived by our examinating. Ramdas deeply believed in the practical path of the European Enlightenment. Ramdas was talking often about being an immigrant. He could tell beautiful stories recalling smells and little details from his homeland, Suriname. He would conceive himself as a lucky bird. In this he meant the lucky immigrant, since he knew the Dutch language before he arrived to Holland. In an interview Ramdas gave, he was asked if the interrogation has been successful. Ramdas responds, no, it hasn't been. But this is something you can say of any country. Every country is becoming. The Netherlands, a society, is becoming. When you ask, as integration succeed, as integration succeed, you ask, is this society complete? And that is an absurd question. One cannot declare a society failed, like one cannot declare a society accomplished. It makes me, Yael, think of simulating a society as an analogy for the self, the self that is never ready, 
the self as a walking process, the self admitted to the other inner self, to the other out of herself, the self instead of urgency becoming the other, and with this enhances herself. Later, in an interview, he will admit, sadly, that in Holland, the stupidity institutionalized much easier than he ever could imagine, and how the formation of a cabinet with a PFFA must have been made all of us totally mad and angry, but it did not happen, except some painful appearance of distance, some nothing, nothing happened. Mazul. خايف قلق جيعان خايف معدب هل هما الأشياء الداخلية الجلاس الشيء العمل ديالو الأشياء اللي كتخليه في حال التعذيب باش يتكلم Isolated, confused, weary, hungry, frightened and tormented would gradually be reduced to an angry collection of simple needs, all of them controlled by his inter interrogators. And the key to filling all those needs would be the same, to talk. It was the fear more than the pain that made them talk. Fear works. It is more effective than any drug, tactic, or torture device. According to an scientific study cited by Cobert Manuel, most people cope with pain better than they think they will. As people become more familiar with pain, they become conditioned to it. Those who have suffered more physical pain than others, from being beaten frequently as a child, for example, or suffering a painful illness, may adapt to it and come to fear it less. So once interrogators resort to actual torture, they are apt to lose ground. السياسة السبعينات 
اي حزب معارض كانوا كيقعدوا كيما الاخوان المسلمين لا في سوريا ولا في العراق ولا في مصر تستسبعين حتى 82 الاخوان المسلمين تعرضوا كثير من الاعتقالات والتسجيل وما غير ذلك من طرف حزب العكس 82 كان نهضه وكانت مباحه كبيره في مدينه هانا هانا في سوريا 20 الف شخص مات هانا مدن قدام مع تقريبا اربع المدن الموجوده في سوريا مدينه كبيره قديمه عتيقه هي مركز ديال الاخوان المسلمين الجيش السوري هاجمها مرارا ومرارا لانهم كيعتقلوا هادشي من 64 الى يومنا هذا اي نهضه اسلاميه فيما يخص في هانا اما كتنهض الجيش السوري كيقتلها واخيرا الى يومنا هذا فيما يخص في سوريا 20 الف شخص توفى في مدينه هانا باش نوضحوا القضيه ديال الحزب البعث لان الاحزاب السياسيه فيما يخص في مدن الدول الشرقيه مبنيه على اساس العائله بشار الاسد وولد حافظ الاسد وقت الولاده كمل السير ديال الباه الشعب ظن بلي غادي يكون واحد النهضه ولا غادي يكون في ضوء جديد فيما يخص السياسه العربيه والسوريه نعرفوا بلي عندنا خوه ماهر ماهر هو خوه بشار مواليد 67 معروف بلي هو عنفي وعصبي وهو رئيس للامن في سوريا رامي رامي مخلوف هو ولد عم بشار زائد 96 في تعامل مع الاقتصاد اي حاجه اقتصاديه فيما يخص في سوريا في يدو سيريا تيل، طيران، الابناك، شركة الغاز، التليفون، التلفازة، أي حاجة اللي عندها مقام وعندها أهمية في نفس الاقتصاد في يدو. كاين شليح حتى هو ولد عم عاد عسيف شوقت ولد عم بشار. مواليد الخمسينات. كان هو معروف بلي هو رئيس المخابرات سوريا وهو معروف بانه اي اعتقال تحت يده سبي سبو خويا وعمي النهضه السوريه اللي وقعت في سوريا نهضت ان الشعب السوري بغى تغييرات بغى ديمقراطيه بغى شغل بغى مدارس بغى مستشفيات بغى حريه وهذا هو اللي رجع الشعب السوري انه ضد هذا الحزب البعث اللي موجود في سوريا لانه كل جو فيه العائله ديال اسد لهذا الناس وقفوا باش الى هذوك الفرقيه ابراهيم فرشوش was 42 years old man a father of three who was fireman in Hama and an amateur poet فرشوش wrote a song mocking Bashar al Assad the ruling Ba'ath party. This song turned into the protest anthem. On July 4, 2011, hundreds of thousands sang after Ibrahim Foshosh in Hamas center, Aziz Square, during a rally for Syria. Two days later, on July 3rd, Ibrahim was seized by the white car, in a white car. In the next morning, on July 4, 2011, his body was found floating in the Asi River. His throat was cut and his vocal cords ripped out. After his death, Kosos was named by his fellow protest, Nightingale of the Revolution, or the Voice of the Revolution. In order for better understanding of the song, I would like to introduce some name and expression mentioning it. Bahat Party was a political party, is a political party, founded in Syria. The party adopted by atheism and ideology mixing Arab nationalist, pan-Arabism, Arab socialist, and anti-imperialist interest. The atheism calls for renaissance and unification of the Arab world into a single state. Its motto is unity, liberty, socialism. From the very first moment the Ba'ath party governs the country in 1970, it was merciless toward the opposition. Behind closed doors, Syria, Syria 
was a society of arbitrary arrest, alleged disappearance and executions. As a reaction of this continuous suppression, the Muslim Bala radicalized the movement and uprising against the Ba'ath Party during 76 to 82. Their uprising created in 82 in the massacre Hama, where around 20,000 people were killed. Hama is a city and the banks of the Hama. Hamai, the city, and the banks of the Ortens River in West Central Syria, <coughs> north of Damascus. Hamai is the fourth largest city in Syria. In the last decade, the city of Hama has become known as the center of anti baath opposition. In Syria, most particularly, the Muslim Brotherhood. The city was attacked by the Syrian army beginning with 1964 Islamic uprising and becoming the sense of bloodshed during the Islamic uprising in Syria, April 81, and especially in 82, when some 20,000 people were killed in what became known as the Ma Massacre. The city was once again surrounded by the Syrian military as one of the main area of the 2011 uprising. Bashar al-Assad. Bashar al-Assad was born in 1965. He became the president of Syria in July 2000. He inherited the presidency from his father. This change, this change of presidential was a moment of hope, hopeful formation in the government. But it became quite soon clear that the son is a brutal dictator as his father. Maher. Maher is Maher al-Assad the brother of Bashar. He was born in 1967. He is known to be very aggressive and quite impulsive. He is the head of the Republican Garden, God. This superior elite group is responsible for major human rights crimes in the last years. Rami. Rami is Rami Malkouf, the brother-in-law of Bashar. He was born in 1969. He dominated the economy of Syria. He owns Silatel, the dominant te telecommunication company, two banks, different oil and gas companies, airline companies, television channels, and he has a full control on the import of luxury products. Shalish. Shalish is a Sifshawakt, the brother-in-law of Bashar. He was born in 1950. He functioned for years as the head of notorious secret police in Syria, and now he is the vice chef of Syrian army. He is responsible for the bombing residential areas, the large-scale execution, and the alleged disappearance. They robbed my brother and uncle. This uprising came out of frustration, particularly about the lack of democracy and the ongoing intimidation of the Secret Service, but also about the economic despair. Syrian cities are full of young people ready with qualification that could find and that could cannot find any job because they are not connected to the network of Ami Makrof. The list of direct member or far relative of the Assad family would hold high position is very long. These men collectively, collectively form a framework of the Syria state that is fully controlled by the Assad family. Get out, Bashar. Allah irhal ya Bashar. Allah irhal ya Bashar. Allah irhal ya Bashar. Ya Ilkhal Ya Bashar Ya Ilkhal Ya Bashar Ya Ilkhal Ya Bashar Ya Ilkhal Ya Bashar